Two ball clubs, one division. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Minnesota Twins. 2K Sports presents MLB 2K10. They battle each other yearly in this division. The White Sox and the Twins. Chicago looking to win one here in the Twins home field. It is the pitcher's nightmare to see Joe Maurer at the plate. We're going to watch him work today. 2K Sports proudly presents Major League Baseball. It's Wednesday night. Happy to have you with us. On the mound to make the start, Francisco Lariano. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? Lefty Francisco Lariano out on the mound. Since his surgery, the velocity on the fastball has not really come back. So command is going to be critical. He has to hit his spots early in the count with a fastball to make his sweeping slider effective. He also has a quality changeup to keep hitters off balance. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Gian's got going. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, it's so rare for a guy that has some power in his bat, like Alexi Ramirez has, but he doesn't strike out a lot. That shows he has great plate discipline, and he also, when he gets a chance, he puts the ball in play. So look for some excitement and some action every time he comes to bat today. And it's Johnny Damon. Last night, Twins lost. Chance here to even up the series if they can win it 1-1 against Chicago. Loriano sets and throws. Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0 and 1. Now you look at that last loss. Team needs a win right now. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And out number one as he steps on the base. Now we'll take a quick look at the Twins and how they'll be out there positionally on defense. And uh, Steve, individual factors out there. Now Joe Maurer behind the plate can really handle the pitching staff. He also has a very good throwing arm. And that's uncommon for a guy six foot five with such a long delivery. And it's Alexei Ramirez now, one away. Well, the Twins played very well Great against one. the Chicago White Sox in 2009, something they managed to do against all their division rivals last year. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. The Twins outscored the White Sox 110 to 80 in that 12 6 series edge on the year last year. Well, that was the thing with the White Sox in 2009, was they were just inept offensively. Very inconsistent. Hit hard to second. Tolbert. And so Ramirez retired. And it's Paul Canerco now. Bases empty and two down. He swings now and really hit that. This one's going to be fielded by Span. And he's there to retire the sun. And they're unable to make any noise here in this half inning. Bottom half coming right up for the Twins. And doing the pitching, it'll be Eric Bedard. He gets settled in for Chicago. So Steve, how's he going to handle these Minnesota bats today? Oh, sending a good lefty to the mound in this ball game here, but this is a great lineup, a lineup that can really beat up even some of the best pitchers in the game. So he's going to have to be on top of his game in order to do it and rely upon that movement on his pitches. And here's the first one. And he lays one down here. Bedard throw is not in time, and that will be an infield single. Pepsi presents our starting lineups. Here's a look at the Twins. Scouting Big John, who are we uh, looking at today? Well, J.J. Hardy is one of the more streaky players in all of baseball. When he's going good, he's going real good. But when it goes south, it can go way south. He has to find some consistency, and he's been working on that this year. If he does, he can be a big factor in this game today. Span stealing. And he's in there at second base. And he watches the outside pitch from Bedard for a ball. He went with the big curveball off the plate, trying to get him to reach for it, but he lays off. Swing and a miss by Young. Count knotted up. A line drive towards short. And it's caught by Ramirez. Now the runner will have to hold it second. 
Now this shortstop makes it look easy, but there's nothing easy about that. Those hard line drives often are like knuckleballs coming at him, but he made the play. And here's Joe Mauer. Well, Joe Mauer established himself as one of the best players in all of baseball, not just the American League, in 2009 with the Twins. Led the league in hitting, which is almost an unbelievable thing to do if you're a catcher. Fastball just misses, and he falls behind 2-0. Maurer's ability to keep the offensive numbers going while he continues the up and down job behind the plate is one of the real fascinating things about him. Just a span stealing. Safe. He gets in there. Strike three, Joe Bauer. Oh, he swings right three. through that one, and he is out. Number five. Well, he climbs the ladder Michael on him, Gary. He just Dyer. didn't have enough bat speed to catch up to that pitch. He looks to bring in an RBI, Michael Kadire. Bedard gets set and delivers. Misses outside for ball two. Comes set, now the 2-0. On the ground to third. Tian throws to first side, is retired. So no runs on one hit and nobody left on. No runs. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Carlos Quinton. Loriano sets and throws. Hit sharply towards the hole. And Quinton's got himself a base hit. Coming now breaking down Carlos Quinton's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting Gordon average. Beckham. First in hits. And he's also first in on-base percentage. That knack of getting on base better than anybody else. He can spoil a pitcher's pitch, work the count. He knows the strike zone extremely well. 0 oh, and 1 offering from Luriano. He makes contact, line drive. But I got a good piece of this one hitting a shot toward first base, but first base was there for the out. Here's a runner on for Alex Rios. Well, now that the Minnesota Twins have a new home and a new stadium, it's going to be hit up the middle. And he'll go back to first. You know something that was such a great play that's worth one more look. How about the camera work right there on that one terrific job guys on the camera and what a play. It's going to be Brzezinski certainly for the twins at home with the baggies gone now and the outdoor daylight and cold weather and all that there. It's going to be interesting to see how they perform. Yeah this is going to be a wait and see thing because a lot swung on hit and that hit streak will continue as that one gets through. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, that base hit right there gives him a dozen straight games with the hit, and it looks like he might just be getting started. And Mark T into bat. One of the best batting averages in the league. To left center, and there's Young for out number three. That's called short work of three. Took six pitches. The White Sox still hoping to put something up. For those of you just joining in, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Kruk and Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And it's J.J. Hardy now. Fastball just misses. 1 and 0. Here's the 1 0. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. One away. Rank wise now, let's take a look at where the Minnesota Twins sit in the American League. Second in on base percentage, third in walks. They also show up in the top five in team batting average. You love the depth of this lineup and their ability to find holes and get runners on base. Tolbert at the plate. One out, nobody on. Right. 
And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. The hitter thought that ball was inside. It certainly wasn't low, and it looks like it was in there. Drill towards the hole, and Conurco makes the catch. Well, he hit this one on the screws, but luckily the first baseman had a position properly and had the big old glove over there to get him out. Bedard gets set and delivers. Swing, soft liner towards left center. That looks like a single. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the run scored, you give yourself a chance to win. Simmons settles in. Line softly to center field. And that's through a base hit. Runner around second. He's heading for third. And not in time with the throw. He is safe at third. That's a great situation for some offense. Got to like the aggressiveness on the bases right there. He was thinking third base all the way. As soon as he saw it go through the infield, he said, I'm going to third. And Bernard has him 0-1. That one a called strike. This is that fastball already 0-2. The pitch. Still 0 and 2. And that's another foul ball. Well, the battle starts when you step in the batter's box, but the real battle starts when the count is 0 and 2. And that's where he sees himself. But give him credit, he's keeping himself alive by fouling off that tough 0 2 pitch on the outside part of the plate. Let's see if he can make the pitcher make a mistake. They just have to eat this one. The runs go score in the air. Well, he boot that one, and obviously leading to a run scored right there. So you can't make those kind of mistakes and still win ball games. Fouled away. Well, as a hitter, you try to do anything you can to prolong the at-bat to hope the pitcher makes a mistake. Nice job right there, fouling that 2-2 pitch off. And the side's retired. Damon catches it as he heads in. Getting things you have your mittens on it is cold uh, tune in on the radio to our broadcast getting colder here as it gets later fastball swung out of miss stone one well if you're going to get a good fastball you better pull the trigger a little sooner you can't be late on that heater and it's 0 and 2 can say just trying to punch one here swing and a shot to third and Conte retired. And on the State Farm leaderboard, here's a look at the team setting the standard for on-base percentage. Number one, the White Sox. Second, the Twins. Third, the Yankees. Fourth, the Jays. And it's the Red Sox, number five. A great matchup right here. These two offenses really scrappy battlers. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. This is a one-hopper off the wall. Damon heads for third. The throw... And he just barely makes it in there. He is safe. Well, I was already to mark this down on the card as a double. Put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. Runner standing at third. Here's Alexei Ramirez. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Swings at that fastball and misses, 0-1. 0-1 offering from Luriano. Here's a swing and a broken bat line drive. And so Ramirez retired. At the plate. And they get the tying run home. Solid approach at the plate, got a pitch that he could do something with it that he could handle and he picks up an RBI, good job. And it's Paul Canerco now. Well, they did not want to get too far behind in this ball game. So, shot towards the hole. That's going to do it. Kadai is there. They pick up a run on one hit. Nobody left. It's a tie game, everybody. It'll be the leadoff man trying to get things going here. It's Denard Span to lead off. Number two. 
first pitch to Span. Line drive left of the bag and foul. Ground ball towards second. Beckham. That's one down. And fans look out for next Tuesday. We'll be in New York to see the New York Yankees. They'll be hosting the Boston Red Sox. All gets going at 7 p.m. Eastern. And it's Delman Young at the plate. Lined out last time up. Base is empty, one out. First delivery to Young. Bedard gets him to swing and a miss for a strike. Boy, that's some kind of fastball down in the zone right there. The hitter has to be ready for it or he's got no chance to hit it. And it's 0-2 in the Camarilla cutter. Delman Young, he'll be swinging at anything close. The pitcher's got him right where he wants him now. Up ahead, 0-2. He could waste a pitch if he wants to. And it is hit well off the bat of Young. And it's going to be Quentin. And he gets over and grabs it with the left. This ball was well Number hit. Seven. The ball looked like it was going to carry deeper. The right fielder had just enough time to slide over and put it away. Bedard gets set and delivers. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect on one. The pitch. And that's a strike. Mauer now will cover that plate with that big bat. Uh, had some difficulty making contact in the game last night, striking out twice. Oh! And it holds at 0 2. He sends this one in the air towards center. That'll do it as they put that one away. Three up, three down this half inning. White Sox one, Minnesota one. There's a familiar face, Ozzie Gian looking up. And he knows it starts with great pitching. Happy with the last inning on the mound, now looking for the offense. And it's Carlos Quinton in the ball. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Though so Quinton is retired. Let's have a look at the current state of the race with the State Farm standings board in the Central Division. It's the White Sox in first. In second place, it's the Royals. Twins in the third spot. Fourth place, the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody. Sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And Beckham's in the box. You talk about Gordon Beckham and the fact that in his rookie season he hit 270 in 2009. That tells you that this kid has a lot of discipline at the plate. Beckham uh, made his debut in June and it certainly didn't take long for him to be recognized around the majors. Which certainly did and you talk to White Sox personnel and they think that he could be a guy that they can build a team around. That one gets through for a base hit. Now so that'll bring Alex Rios to the plate. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in run score, top five. And Mauer's calling for the pitch. Swing and a miss for strike one. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. He swings, hits a ball to right field. Out number two. It's going to be Brzezinski. And right now, top five and runs batted in in the league. First pitch. Swung on and fouled away. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. Throws to second. That'll be a four south and the third out. Save your arm. 
And for those of you catching up with us, hi, I'm Gary Thorne, along with John Crook and Steve Phillips, bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. First pitch to Kadaya. Ball! That one gets passed. It'll end up with the backstock, but no damage done. Here's Bedard with a 1-0 pitch. Ball That's two. outside. Ball two. Boy, he throws that curveball with such great bite to it. It just breaks it like it's falling right off the table, Gary. Michael Kadaya lays off that one. He's got a chance for a walk now. And when that curveball is such a good pitch, it forces hitters to have to come to the plate looking for it. Well, and, and listen, it's so good that even if you look for it, it's tough to hit. Now the 3-1 pitch. Fouled off. The full count pitch. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. And kadaya has got himself a single. And that's going to bring J.J. Hardy up. Here's what the White Sox schedule looks like. Tonight's game, the last against Minnesota. They'll have uh, tomorrow off. They'll kick off a series with the Kansas City Royals, a little division play. A team that's been on a roll. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And they'll be taking on the Tigers, led by Carlos Guillen team that's really playing well lately so they'll be on the road quite a bit over this next stretch he flew out his last time up runner on first Hardy settles in first pitch swing and ooh look out line drive that shatters the bat great opportunity for Minnesota second base number 20 and over Well, what a great call by the catcher to throw that pitch up and away, and the pitcher executed the pitch. Problem was, it was a better piece of hitting. He showed great discipline just to put that ball in play. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. Oh, boy, he's on his way to third. And they'll just have to sit on this one, so everybody's safe. Ready with a 1-0. And it's fouled off. Here's the delivery. Frozen on the changeup. And it's one and two now. Well, look out. He got lucky there. You do not want to miss in the heart of the plate with this team. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out, one down. Well, K-Cam's going to show us the four-seam fastball here. Good job of keeping him guessing by changing speeds out there. Boy, John, you saw the effect of that. That swing, he wasn't even in the same time zone. But going from off speed to a heater like that is never easy, and even guys that make the big bucks have a hard time adjusting. And Eric Bedard delivers strike two. He's in control in this A-B. Look for the pitcher to try to expand the strike zone here. The hitter has to swing at anything close. Ramirez, a nice play on that one. Over to Canerco. Two away. He comes in to score, and they're going to get the lead. And the first pitch. It's strike one. Can't make contact on the fastball. No balls. One strike. Here's Bedard. On the ground to short. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. So they score once on two hits, one man left. Minnesota taking the lead here. Now we're seeing them put the heat on. And here's Mark Tian leading it off. He's got one of the best averages in the American League. Mark Tian. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Hard grounded a short. Picked up by Hardy. And that'll set down Tian. The twins schedule, let's have a look. The Chicago series ends tonight. They'll get on the road tomorrow. And they head up for a series against the Yankees on the road. They'll get some help from Robinson Cano. The Yankees will in that lineup. That's a team that's been really putting it all together lately. That'll be a three-game series. Then they'll continue on with another road series. The Toronto Blue Jays will be hosting. That's quite a few road games coming up, and that's always challenging. 
Loriano sets and throws. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. And that gets the tying run on board. And that'll bring Johnny Damon to the plate. Well, he waited for that one to get deep in the zone, and he put a good swing on it. Now, with one out, let's see if they try to move him along. Well, Johnny Damon is still such a quality veteran at bat, a guy that's got a little bit of pop in his bat. He knows how to get on base, and he's always there to score some runs. Pitch on the way. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it up there. For Johnny Damon, a putt shot towards the hole. It is through, and the go-ahead runs on board. The opportunity for offense is right now. Shortstop, number 10, Alexi Ramirez. Boy, I don't know in that count, Steve. Number one, the fact that he swung is kind of a surprise. I don't know how he hit that where it was. You're right. On an 0-2 count, you have to protect the plate. Sometimes it's a defensive swing, but sometimes it works out. 0-1 count as that started off with a strike. He's batted three for five. Lifetime off Francisco Lariano. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with a single. So that puts Paul Canerco at the plate. Well, it's now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs an out. And this is what they've been working for in this ball game. Golden opportunity here. Base hit. We've got a whole new game. You don't know how. Oh, what a drive. He smashed it. Runners on the move. And there's two. A double play. They pick up three hits in the inning. They leave the sacks full. Minnesota's protecting their lead. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crock and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. And here's the first one. And that's off the plate away, 1-0. and oh. A 1-0 -oh pitch. 1-0 -oh delivery is a fastball in there, 1-1. He looked like he was looking for a pitch out over the plate. That fastball down and in locked him up a little bit. Now that one's way back to the backstop. Not a pretty pitch. No damage. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Fastball on the black. He doesn't get the call though and it's 3-1. Here it comes. Swings at that fastball, can't make contact, 3-2. Payoff pitch coming. Oh. Foul straight back. Oh. And he fouls another one off. Well, you wonder why guys hit for high averages? Because they don't give in and they don't give up at bats. Look at this battle he has right here. 3 2 pitch inside part of the plate. Fouls it off to keep this thing going. Able to set him down there. Chuck that one up as a strikeout for him. He just reared back and chucked it. Gave him his best fastball right there. Threw it right at the knees. See you later. And it's Denard Span. Career average 337 off the White Sox. Slider just misses 1 0. Three big hits in that game last night. And They'd love to get that contribution again today. Swung on, line softly behind second base. And in there, he's two for three today. That'll bring Delman Young up. Well, anytime you can get a guy on base who can steal bases, it puts so much pressure on the opponent. Let's see if they can get him around to score a run. First delivery to Young, up the middle. Oh, avoided the path of that ball. That was right up the middle. Was that ever close? This a great situation for some offense. Well, the slider's a little bit easier to hit when that break is coming to you as a hitter as opposed to moving away from you. You just have to make sure you clear your hands. He does a good job right there to get a base hit. And Bernard has him 0-1. That one a called strike. Now that he's established the bottom of the strike zone, it gives him so many options. He can go to the breaking ball or climb the ladder with another fastball. Here's the pitch. 
Still 0 and 2. And Maurer fights off yet another during this at bat. Well, even though he took a defensive swing right there, that might have been a pitch he could drive. But you know what? With two strikes, you just have to battle and battle and battle and hope he gets one down in the zone. You can just drop the head of the bat on it. Oh, and they're going to try for the double steal. Fastball got him two down. And he's in there at third. Oh, well, here's the replay. We'll see the double steals a victory in its own right here. Boy, lots of times you get the second guy, the, the tail runner for the out. They couldn't even do that there. No, they couldn't do either one. It's a defense broke down, and the base running got him out of way. And Michael Kadaya up. He had three hits, eight ABs last year against Bedard. Now Przinski sets up. Let's the 1-0 pitch go by, 1-1. He must have been looking for an off-speed pitch in that situation because the fastball looked like it surprised him. He watches the 1-1 pitch, takes a fastball, strike two. Hit in the air to left center. And it's in there. The Minnesota Twins will score. And Young scores as well. So Minnesota continues their offense. That's two RBIs on that hit. Here's our WPA graph, courtesy of Pepsi. J.J. Hardy a runner on first. And they've not had the struggle here at the plate in this game. They just keep building on this lead. No. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And it's through into the gap. Should be extra bases. All the way to the wall. The throw. And Kadaya comes home. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. Well, I was already to mark this down on the card as a double. Put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. And on third, two down. Here's the first pitch. That one's going to be outside. Ball one. Well, this late in the ball game. Up over 20 pitches in this inning alone, and it makes you wonder how much longer they can keep him in this ballgame. That catches the inside part of the plate, 101. A lifetime 290 hitter against the White Sox. He takes a fastball for a strike. Now it's one and two. This is the go-to pitch for many pitchers in the major league. The fastball down and away. When in doubt, that's where you go. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. They pick up four hits in the inning and three runs across the plate. Twins on top by four. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. One for two in the ballgame. Number 20, Carlos Quinton. First pitch to Quinton. Lined hard deep down the right field side. That's going to one hop off the wall. And he pulls into second base. That will be a double. And Beckham's in the box. Well, hoping he can carry over the success from last night when he picked up five base hits. See if he can't contribute today. And the first pitch. And swinging and missing on Lariano's pitch. 0 and 1. Pretty good location right there. That slider down in the strike zone. And you know what? Hit hard on the ground towards third. And it gets through. Not bad. Two for three today. Now and that's going to plate Chicago Alex Rios. Rios. Center fielder. Number I tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, Rios. but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and he took advantage of it. Now swing and a shot towards second. The second, there's one. And they turn the double play. And the run comes in. Here's a look, 4 6 3 on the double play. That's the way they teach you, whether you're at second base or shortstop. One fluid motion, get it out of the glove and get rid of it. It's going to be Brzezinski. Top five AL and runs scored. Loriano sets and throws. That one goes foul.
And here's the pitch. Hit hard on the ground to short. And that'll put Przinsky on first. Now Let's check out the league hit leaders courtesy of State Farm. That brings up Mark Tian. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense is somebody they've really come to rely upon. A runner on first with two outs. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. A swing and a hit to Span. That's caught. Side is retired. They pick up one on three hits. Strand a man. On camera, the shot of Ron Gardenhire. He has to be pleased with his team's performance so far today. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching. The White Sox turning to a reliever here. Gary, I tell you, I probably would have let this starter go a little bit longer. I mean, better safe than sorry, but why burn the bullpen this early in the game if you don't have to? Save them, keep them fresh, make them right for the end of the game. Here's the pitch. Lined foul towards third. Slider called third strike out number one. Well, it seemed like he made it easy. Three pitches, big strikeout. Can't get rid of a guy any quicker than that. Only took three and he's gone. Now the first pitch. Swung and a ground ball to third. Over to Canerco. Two away. Third base. Number eight. Punto at the plate. And he hit 277 last season against the White Sox. Here's the delivery. Fastball runs inside. 1 0. Right on it, but he fouls it straight back. And another foul ball. Foul ball. Still one and two. Fastball swung on and missed. Side retired. No hits. Nobody left on. And a good defensive half inning. Minnesota five. White Sox two. And if you are just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne, along with John Crux, Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Hit in the air to center field. And that should be a single. Now, well, a great job right there by the first hitter in this inning to get on base. And you know, a lot of big innings are started with that first guy getting on. And you have one or two big innings in a game, and that can be the difference in the outcome. Lined up the middle, and he's got it now. And two, a double play. Nice play, especially on the relay to first. 4 6 3. Uh, it's textbook right there. Taylor made double play. Hit it where they are and turn it. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. That ball is belted, deep left center. That ball is way back there. Gone, a home run. They wish that homer had been chased in a couple more. They'll take it, though, only down two. Now take a look at this one. You can see the pitch coming to the inside corner. He's able to make the adjustment and hit it over the fence. He was able to get that big part of the bat on that inside pitch. And once that happened, it's gone. Well, I tell you, the pitching and defense have got to be nervous right now as the Southsiders look locked in at the plate. They've almost caught him. Base is empty with two outs. And he starts Canerco out. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0 and 1. And at this point, you get things rolling, you get home runs, you're not only back in the game, you're giving yourself a chance to win it. And that's what you want is just a chance to win it. And they put themselves in that position. Now they need offense and somebody to shut the door late.
take a second to view the top overall power hitters in the league on the State Farm leaderboard. That's some big time power hitters right here. Some guys that look to drive the ball out of the ballpark and swing hard in case they hit it. And when they make contact, they can do some serious damage. Here's Carlos Quinton. The White Sox again with a great opportunity. And swinging and missing on Lariano's pitch 0 and 1. Now second out in the inning uh, here in the smashes that one towards the shortstop and another hit they're really gunning right now. Now up to the plate. Well, he's Position. having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. And that's his third hit of the game so far. And Matt Guerrero gets ready to throw. He'll be relieving for the twins now. Pretty good performance today by the starter. All in all, pretty solid outing. Now it's up to the pen. Well, you can feel the magnitude of this situation. And Gordon Beckham has that straight look on his face. You cannot see any emotion. He looks like he's confident to get the job done. He went two for three last year off Guerrero. Takes a swipe on that pitch in the dirt. Not sure if he saw that. And that one swung on him. Missed by Gordon Beckham. Well, they chip away, grabbing an important run with that solo big fly. The White Sox, they're not going to cons It's Denard Spann to lead off. Two for three thus far. Number two, Denard First pitch to Spann. It's now 0-1. Watch that fastball go by. You can really stay out of big trouble in the big inning if you can spot your fastball down in the zone. And with two strikes on him, Denard Spann, he's going to have to shorten the swing. On the ground to short, fielded by Ramirez. So Span is sent down. And Delman Young in. He singled in his last at bat. First delivery to Young. Hit sharply down the line. And Tian with the catch. Oh, Gary, I tell you what, I think he caught that one in self defense. He couldn't even move, he had to just get the glove up. Starts him off with one at the knees for a strike. Down, down, down. It's all about location. That breaking ball down in the zone makes it very difficult on the hitter. And in there. He has struggled today. Now finally a base hit in the record book. So here he is, Michael Kadire. Two outs and a man on first. First pitch to Kadaya, headed for the middle, and it gets down a three for four game. Good hitting job. Well, a big two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. And we'll get to see Tony Pena pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. So Steve, how's he going to handle these Minnesota bats today? When you bring in a guy out of the bullpen, you like to have some power stuff, and that's what Tony Pena brings. Power with that. Hit sharply towards the hole. And Maurer scores. Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. Just third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. Tolbert at the plate. Steve, we've seen them continue to charge it up at the plate, and it doesn't look like they're going to be stopped. Well, they're taking advantage of add-on time, and the opportunities are there. They're cashing in, adding on to this lead. And you hope the pitcher's a little frustrated right here, maybe makes a mistake in a bad pitch, and you add to it. Swings, and it's a little flare to shallow right. So they scratch across a run. Three hits and a couple left on. Minnesota, a three-run lead. And Alex Rios to lead off. 0 for 3 to this point. Number 51, Alex Rios. Here's the pitch. He got fooled on that one. Takes a cut at a ball down in the dirt. That one swung on, hit in the air to deep right center field. This one rolls through to the wall. Now look at the leaders and extra base hits courtesy of State Farm. 12, A.J. Pruszynski. Chance to drive it a run, A.J. Pruszynski. No one out and a runner on second. Here's the pitch. 
Strike Swings one. and misses the slider. 0-1. Obviously getting late right now, Gary, and I think that from the pitching perspective, you'll trick. Swing and a shot to third. And makes its way through. The tying run will come to bat. We talk about a guy who's swinging it right now as good as anybody. That's his third hit of the ball game thus far. Let's see if this can mount a rally with nobody out. Now here is Mark Tian. Boy, what a chance he's got here for the White Sox. Line drive. One. And two. They got both of them that time. And they bring him home. Designated hitter, number 30, Mark Patsa. And we've got Jose Maharas on the mound. He'll be relieving for the Twins now. Well, the manager's managing this one like there's no tomorrow, like it's a must game. So he's going to want to get some quick outs and be efficient. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Well hit towards the middle. Picked up by Hardy. Throws to first in time. That's three down. So they pick up a run on two hits. And if you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crump. And Pridey's batting. First pitch fastball misses badly that time. 1-0. Well, you see there, he tried to go on that outside corner down and away. Give the hitter a lot of credit, though. You know that's a pitch you can't hit, so don't oh. even swing at it. When the catcher looked like he really wanted that one. Here it comes. Oh. Fastball just misses. He runs it to 3-0. Drilled towards third. And this could be extra bases heading towards the corner. He's going to try and test him here. Now back. Take the risk and sometimes it pays off and it does there. Well I'll tell you what it's a risk there's no question about it. He got in safely but I have to consider whether it's a risk worth taking. And the first pitch that one's drilled to short and it's caught by Ramirez and he looks that runner back to second base. A good shortstop puts himself in position to make the play right there. He didn't have to move at all as that ball was hit directly at him. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And that gets through for a base hit. Got to try to make it home here. And he scores. Well, they tried to sneak that first pitch fastball by him, but he was sitting on it, and he whacked it in the left. Okay, you can look at it a couple ways. You can say, look, we've got the lead. Let's play for another big hit here. Or you can turn it on, put the... Swung ground ball to short. Up with it now. Throw is not in time, and that will be an infield single. Delman Young looking to knock in a run. Last year, just an 0 for 1 off Pena. Ball. Just missed with the fastball. 1 0. 1 0 now. That swung on and hit. Quentin's going to play it. Two away. Now back with a Minnesota twin. Catcher number seven. It's Joe Mauer. The offense opening here. Another shot at it. And Maurer ready for the first pitch. The 0-0 delivery, a fastball taken for a strike. There's a swing, fly ball down the line and left. And yet another hit there, seeing the ball well. And he scores. So Minnesota continues their offense. Number five, Michael. Oh, this is a tough piece of hitting right here. The ball in on his hands, able to fight it off and drive it the other way. And that's that quintessential kind of inside out base hit. Fastball misses away. 1 0. A shot up the middle. And it's in there. He continues to get on base. That's hit number four in this game. And Span scores. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. Couple out, and two men are on for J.J. Hardy. Show no mercy. When the offense is going, you don't give up at bats, and they're not. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. And that's going to do it in this half inning. A strike for five base hits in this inning and three runs up. Minnesota comfortably up five runs.
And so Johnny Damon leads it off. Had a couple of hits, four trips to the plate. Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swing and lined up the middle. And that gets down. Damon, base hit. So that brings Alexei Ramirez up. But just what his team needed, he continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. Runner on first base, nobody out. The pitch. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. Well, a non-save situation right here in the ninth inning, and they just want... There's a bullet towards third, and this is a fair ball heading towards the corner. There's the throw. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, with that big hit right there, he only needs a triple to complete the cycle. But, hey, that's the toughest one to get. Let's see if he can do it. And here's Paul Konerko. His lifetime average, 262 against the Twins. Strike two, no balls and two strikes. Konerko now will look to tighten up that zone. And Paul Konerko strikes out, could not make contact. The ability to move your pitches around within the zone, to change a hitter's eye level and keep them off balance are critical to success. Very successful there, three pitches and a strikeout. Strike two, now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. The hitter's got to be in defense mode right here, just looking to make contact. Got to shorten up the swing. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. Oh, boy, that is a big out when you got a couple in scoring position. Well, it's a very impressive piece of work. You know, they get stressed on all the time by their pitching coaches. Situational. And a grounder is at the last out. And the throws in time at first. Mercy, what a play. Solid play today by Minnesota leads them to victory. Well, time to bestow that Pepsi Clutch Performance Award. Michael Kadir, a game changer with a bat. You know, the big thing you look at as you're making out your lineup as a manager is where the tough outs are. And today, those tough outs were with this hitter. He's a consummate professional hitter. He always throws a... And Steve, they're able to win this game where they're handily. A little bit of home cook it here that was right on from the beginning. Now, well, Gary is a player you always like having the 10th man out there, and these fans provided that today. They were into it. This is Gary Thorne with John Cruck and Steve Phillips. Hope you had a great time. As good as we did, then you're all set. See you next time.